हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजीत जायसवाल डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पाण्डिचेरी सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी पुडुचेरी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल इन टाइटल कंपेरेटिव एनाटॉमी बिटवीन मैन एंड एप्स अंडर बायोलॉजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी द इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल्स इज रिलेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन एंड एप्स overview of living apes and anatomical differences between human and apes before starting to discuss about the comparative anatomy between man and apes let's try to see this figure from this figure externally morphologically we try to find out the differences that we have seen in the skull of man and apes we also find some differences in the rib cage and in the vertebral column we can see the differences in the lower region especially in the pelvic girdle regions and also there is a marked differences we can we may observe in their hand or what is called forelimb and hind limb so before starting this particular modules it is important for us to have a glimpse of pictorial informations about man and apes now let's discuss the introductory informations of man and ape before starting to discuss about the differences between the two let us let me give you a glimpse of information about them human and apes belong to the same order primate along with monkey and small prosimians primates are mammal which has a grasping hand large brain and high degree of learn rather than innate behavior there are about 300 species of non human primate currently recognized by carl linnaeus divided the prime into two suborder prosimian and anthropoid prosimian include lemur loris tarsiers and anthropoid include man apes and human however later on saint hilaire has developed a modified classification system based on genetic relationship called as streptorhine and haplorhine streptorhine include lemur and loris and haplorhine include tarsier monkey apes and human the difference in the two classification system is the position of tarsiers later scholar considered tarsier as haplorhine primate and thought to occupy an evolutionary position between prosimian and anthropoid primate they possess a mixture of traits of anthropoids and prosimian primates but they are generally considered to be close to anthropoids human and apes are classified in the super family homonoidea homonoidea have three families hylobatidae pongidi and humanoidi hylobatidi example the gibbon pongidi example chimpanzee orangutan gorilla humanoidi example the human the given chart shows the clear cut explanations about their classifications how primates divided into two branches of streptorhine and haplorhine as we have already discussed in the earlier modules here also the streptorhines having lemuroidea lorisoidea and tarsoidea and haplorhine is divided into new world monkey old world monkey and homonoidea that is apes and human the position of tarsoidea is little bit confusing that's why it was placed between haplorhine and streptorhine and sometime In the, as, as we have discussed in the earlier classifications, the prosimians were somewhat similar to Lemuroidea, Lorsioidea, and Tarsioidea, and anthropoids include New World monkey, Old World monkey, and Homoidea. Overview of living apes. Apes can be divided into two: lesser and greater apes. Gibbon are considered as lesser apes, while member of pongidi family are considered as great apes 
Now let's discuss about the some of the important characteristic feature of gibbon. Gibbons are the smallest apes of all that is in relation to congedi found in Asian tropical and subtropical forest from easternmost India and Bangladesh through mainland Southeast Asia and Indonesia archipelago. Body size range from 4 kg to 12 kg. Highly arboreal and adopted brachiation mode of locomotion. Their arms are long and have extremely elongated finger with a shortened thumb and suspensory shoulder specially designed for tree top life. They were frugivorous and eat varieties of fruit. Now let's discuss about the orangutan. Orangutan are the most enigmatic hominoid primates found only in the rainforest of Indonesian island of Sumatra and Borneo. They have large body size. They exhibit extremely sexual dimorphism, which means male and female differences is still existing. They are highly arboreal, but sometimes they travel quadrupedally on ground also. They are frugivorous, but they also eat bark of the tree, leaves, insect and rarely they eat meat also. Now let's discuss about gorillas. After discussing orangutan, the gorillas, gorillas are the largest primate weighing more than 200 kg, restricted to the forest area of western and eastern equatorial Africa. They are primarily terrestrial, but they practice knuckle walking on ground. They are extremely sexual dimorphic with the weight of the male is more than, more than the female. They have a tall head due to the presence of a crisp like vault. They are exclusively vegetarian and they mostly eat leaves, pith, stalk and fruits. They are gentle and move slowly like a gentleman. They live in a group which include both male and female adult with their sub-adult offspring. Now let's discuss about the, some of the important feature of a chimpanzee. Chimpanzee are our closest living relatives. Man share a great similarities genetically with chimpanzee. They are extraordinarily adoptive animal found across equatorial Africa from lowland rainforest to nearly open grassland. Male weight up to 68 kg and females are about 10 to 50 percent lesser than the male. They spend more time on tree. They are frequently excited, active and noisy. In addition to quadrupedal knuckle walker, they may bracteate. On ground, they frequently walk bipedally for short distance when carrying food or other object. They eat a highly devised di diet including fruits, insect, nuts, birds, egg, caterpillar and smaller animal. Bonobus. Bonobus is similar to chimpanzee. They are also called as pygmy chim chimpanzee because of their slightly more slender build. They exhibit more modest sexual dimorphism than the other great apes. They are found only in an area south of Jerry River in Democratic Republic of the Congo. They have longer legs relative to arm, relatively smaller head and dark face from birth and tuft of hair at the side of the face. They are more arboreal than chimpanzee. They eat largely fruit type but rarely more on leafy plant material. 
from the forest floor than chimpanzee do. They occasionally eat meat derived from small animals. Now let's start the comparative anatomy of human and apes. Since human and apes belong to the same superfamily, they share many similar traits like increased brain volume and intelligence, extended ontogeny, increases complexity of social interaction and large body size, and amidst this similarity, human and apes also have lot of lots of anatomical differences. Some of the differences will be discussed in the following headings like skull, teeth and lower jaw, vertebral column and thorax, pelvis and birth canal, leg, foot and arm. Now let's discuss the differences in the skull. The size of the human brain increased during the course of evolution and become much larger than any of the living apes. It ranges from 1300 cc centimeter to 1450 cc. The size of orangutan brain ranging from 365 cc to 425 cc. That of, that of the chimpanzee between 400 cc to 500 cc and that of gorilla between 400 cc to 500 cc. Thus, in human, the brain size is almost 3-4 larger than the average apes. Apes brain size. To accommodate this large brain size, human cranium became, becomes larger and more protruding. Consequently, the facial portion is reduced and become smaller than the cranium portion in human. However, apes have larger facial portion than the cranium portion. In human face, is also becomes more vertical than that of apes. Human have more prominent and arch forehead. Apes lack forehead. The frontal and the parietal tuberosities become well marked in human cranium compared to that of apes. Occipital bone is well arched and is more protruding in human compared to apes. The vault of human cranium is smooth and rounded and more so in chimpanzee but gorilla have sharp crest with rough surface while orangutan has less marked ridges the foramen magnum that is the hole where spinal cord joined with the brain and it is the attachment point of vertebrate column with skull is anteriorly placed we can see this information in the next figure reflected in the next reflected afterward. But in the case of apes, the foramen magnum is placed towards posterior, making the skull to hang on vertebral column. To balance the head, a strong muscle need to attach to the posterior side of the skull in apes. So, the nuchal region is rugged in apes while it is comparatively smooth in human. Moreover, the nuchal plane is also horizontally flat on the base of the skull facing directly downward in human. But in apes, it faced backward forming an angle with the base of the skull. The structure in human cranium are highly serrated and fused at a very late age or existed throughout one's life, while the sutures of ape are less serrated and start to fuse at the early age. The shape of orbit in human is rectangular with rounded angles, but the chimpanzee have more or less elliptical orbit while orangutan and gorilla have oval or rounded object. The supraorbital ridges in human are varies in size and separated, but gorilla have massive and fused supraorbital ridges. Chimpanzee have prominent but 
separated supraorbital ridge while orangutan have prominent but continuous supraorbital ridges the nasal bone in human are short and broad with a raised nasal bridge but apes lack nasal bridge completely the nasal bone in chimpanzee are short and flat long in orangutan whereas the nasal bone in in gorilla is long and wide at base nasal sutures are present in human and chimpanzee but tend to be absent in gorilla and often absent in orangutan the nasal apparatus in human are pear shaped it is so in chimpanzee and orangutan but gorilla have oval shaped nasal apparatus infra nasal spines are sharp in human but it is absent in apes pre maxilla is fused to maxilla in human but it is well marked in apes alveolar prognathism is a well marked in, in apes but it is a variable in human makes the face more vertical compared to apes these are the important feature characteristic feature of skull which make the distinction between apes and human now let's discuss about the teeth and lower jaw of apes and human teeth the morphology of teeth is associated with the dietary habit of the animal since human have adopted to cooked tender food the size of the teeth is also reduced human have comparatively smaller teeth than the apes the canine in human is no more used for tearing of flashes so it is much reduced in size that it becomes more or less in same height with other teeth the canine in ape are larger pointed sharp and projecting diastema are variable variably present in apes but it is altogether absent in human the posterior teeth in apes are larger than the human and are arranged in parallel this give the dental arcade of ape a u shaped in human it is parabolic the roots of the molar are convergent in human but divergent in apes so these are the informations of teeth now let's discuss about the lower jaw human have slender and light mandible or lower jaw with distinct chin apes have large and massive mandible without chin the sigmoid notch is deep and narrow with ascending narrow and high ramus ape have have shallow and broad sigmoid notch with broad short and large ascending ramus in human genial tubercle is present and simian self is absent while it is opposite in apes as in apes genial tubercle is present and simian self is is present or in human genial tubercle is present whereas it is in apes it is absent similarly the simian self is present in the case of apes but absent in the case of human now let's discuss about the vertebral column and thorax of man and apes the vertebral column is made up of a series of bones called vertebrae joined together it can be divided into four region or segment that is cervical vertebrae lying in the neck region thoracic vertebrae lying in the thoracic region lumbar vertebrae lying in the lower back and sacrum coccyx region lying in the pelvic region in apes vertebral column has a single curved forming c shaped 
making thoracic region slightly convex but in human it is as shaped by adding two secondary and opposing curve in cervical and lumbar region to the c shaped curve of apes the s shaped vertebral column brings the center of gravity just below the body between the two feet the s shaped vertebral column also made it available to able to carry the weight of the body and transmitted over the hips and then ultimately over the two feet however in apes the center of gravity falls in front of their feet causing them to fall forward when stand or else dance to avoid falling in human the amount of weight bore increase as we go down the vertebral column this is reflected by the gradual increase in size of this vertebrae toward the lower region vertebrae are largest in lumbar region the increased size of lower vertebrae poses a side effect in human lower back pain is a common medial problem especially among the pregnant women when the weight bore by the vertebral column increases however in apes the weight bore by the vertebral column remain more or less same along the vertebral column and hence the size of the vertebrae vertebrae body is almost equal throughout the spinous process of the vertebrae is projected downward especially in cervical region in human but in apes this process are vertical to the axis of the vertebral column the orientation of the vertebral column in human is also different from ape in human as the position of the foramen magnum is changed the column comes out from the base of the skull rather than from the back of the skull in apes shifting the center of gravity also brings changes in the shape of the thorax the human th thorax is barrel shaped with the content of thoracic pulling downward by gravity the transverse diameter is greater than the dorso ventral diameter the shoulder girdle is broader and clavicle become longer than the apes however in apes the shape of the thorax is like an inverted cone with the point at the top pelvis and birth canal adaptation to bipedalism bring lot of changes in the pelvis anatomy when walking the weight of the body has to balance over a single leg alternatively human pelvis has has evolved changes that automatically facilitate this balancing in apes this balancing is done by throwing their weight over the supporting leg making them rock from side to side when walking on biped this causes them more energy than human anatomically pelvis is made up of two innominates are also called as os coxae bones each innominate bone is again composed of three bones ischium ilium and pubis these three bone fuse together during adolescence and the sacrum part of the vertebral column these bones are arranged in such a way that it gives a basin shape in human with a short broad ilium that runs from posterior to the anterior of the person but in apes ilium is long and flat and placed on the back of the animal this basin shaped pelvis support the abdominal organ that are in a constant tendency 
to be pulled down by gravity and hence help in locomotion. The shortening and broadening of ileum in human makes the acetabulum to place closer to the joint between sacrum and ileum. This is good modification for balancing, but it makes the birth canal narrow. These along with enlarged cranium make childbirth a more difficult task for human compared to apes. Now let us discuss about the important comparative feature of apes and men in relation to leg. Biopedalism bring changes in the anatomy of leg also. The weight of the body though through the pelvis is passed on to the femur in human. The femur are adopted to facilitate bipedalism. Though the femur of both men and apes are same in appearance, lots of variation does exist. The head of the femur articulate with acetabulum at pelvis which faces downward and outward. The human pelvis becomes broader than the apes. This made the head of the femur to place far apart to the side of the person. But the center of gravity should be brought between the feet for better balancing. In order to facilitate this, femur is placed in an angle from the hip into the knee making the lower end of the femur become closer to knee. In apes, the femur are placed almost parallel to one another. This makes the angle formed by the head of the femur and the axis of the femur is larger in human compared to that of apes. This change gives an efficient striding and less energy loss during walking in human compared to apes. Moreover, to bone the weight of the body, the shaft of the femur in human is slightly curved. Linea aspera is well marked in human but diminished in apes. Further, the distal or the lower end of the femur called as femoral condyles and the top of the tibia is enlarged in human. However, in apes, the lower end of the femur and top end of the tibia is comparatively smaller. In overall, the leg is lengthened relatively to the trunk length than that of apes during the cause of evolution. Longer legs are always in favor because of increased striding stride length and efficiency in in walking. Let's discuss about the foot. Most different in the anatomy of human and ape foot is the outcome of the bipedalism and adoption of erect posture in human. The foot skeleton is composed of three types of bone. Tarsal which form the heel and ankle region, metatarsal and phalanges which form the toes. To facilitate efficient striding and carry body weight, the human feet got adaptation. When one walk, the heel strikes first on the ground and followed by rest of the foot. When leaving the ground, heel raised first and the main propulsion force comes from the toes off. To get this force, big toe pushed off the ground by bending strongly backward called as dorsiflex. To make this possible, the big toe in human become larger and aligned together in same line with other two. But quadruped apes, big toe are not in same line and place far apart from the other two. The phalanges in human are shortened than that of apes. In human, the tarsal portion is larger 
longer than the phalanges portion whereas it is vice versa in case of apes moreover human foot is stouter with robust tarsal and big toe which are tightly bind to bind together by ligament making it more stable but less flexible but in apes big toe is placed apart from the other toes and is opposable this make the foot of apes prehensile all the toes in apes are equally developed and hence are more or less same in size but him but in human big toe is the biggest and the lateral digit gradually reduced in size making the last digit the smallest human foot, foot is also complement with two arches to accommodate the body weight first the transverse arch running from the medial to lateral side formed by wedge shaped tarsals second the longitudinal arch running along the length of the foot formed by metatarsal and tarsals this structure help in reducing the chance of fatigue fracture of lower leg apes lack transverse arch now let's discuss about the comparative anatomy of arms of man and apes unlike in apes human arm is no longer used for walking it become free and extensively used for carrying object hold things and making tools in apes hands are still using for walking this makes the hand bone of apes robust to carry the body weight when walking human hand becomes less robust apes arms are also longer or also longer than the lower limb but in human lower limbs are longer than the than the arms of man thumb is opposable and do not orient downward in human but in apes thumb is short shorter than human and face downward phalanges are comparatively shorter than the than that of apes the fingers are straight in human but curved in apes to help them hanging on branches of tree humans have stronger power and precision grip compared to apes so student let's summarize the important point that we have learned in this modules the important point that we have learned in this modules are as follows human and apes they belong to the same order primates primates are mammal which has a grasping hand large brain high degree of learned rather than innate behavior human and apes are classified in the super family hominoidea the hominoidea have three families one is hylobatidae example gibbon it is also called as lesser apes second is pongidae example is chimpanzee gorilla orangutan bonobos this pongidae group can be classified or called as a great apes group so in this lesser ape groups we find only single example of hylobatidae that is gibbon whereas in the greater apes group we find gorilla chimpanzee orangutan and bonobos how many include the human since human and apes belong to the same super family they share similar trait like increased brain volume and intelligence they have a extended ontogeny related to their bipedalism behavior they have a increased 
कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ सोशल इंट्रैक्शन एंड देयर बॉडी साइज इज कंपेरेटिवली लार्जर इमिट्स डिसिमिलरिटी ह्यूमन एंड एप्स आल्सो हैव लॉट ऑफ एनाटॉमिकल डिफरेंसेस सम ऑफ द डिफरेंसेस विल बी डिस्कस इन द फॉलोइंग हेडिंग लाइक द डिफरेंसेस इन द स्कल द डिफरेंसेस इन द टीथ एंड लोअर जॉ differences in the vertebral column and thorax we also find differences in the pelvic region called as birth canal even the leg of humans were quite different from the leg of apes their foot and arms were also shows a marked differences overall even though they carry number of similarity they are close in their anatomical position but they show number of differences also based on this we can classify them as altogether different one thank you